everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Dr. Wright Breaks It Down for You. My name is Jessica, and I'm here with my dad, Dr. Wright. Hey, Dad. Hi, Jessica. It's summertime here in Chicago, and I have a husky. And it's interesting, as I walk her around the neighborhood, people will say, you know, your dog must be so hot, you should shave your dog. I hear that's what you do with huskies, is you shave them, and then they are much cooler. And then I had heard from the people that you're not supposed to shave your dog, and I'm just kind of at a loss to how to make my dog cool in the summertime. You've got to be very careful about trimming or, or shaving your dog. It depends on what kind of dog you have. Some dogs should not have their fur cut back at all. Really? Yes. It depends on a number of factors. And while others, like poodles, it doesn't make that much difference at all. It grows back very quickly. Right. Now, I've studied this, and what I found is really very interesting. Now, for some breeds, it's critical that you not trim the dog's fur even in the summer. You see, the fur actually acts as protection from the heat. Now, you might say, well, how can a fur coat protect the dog from the sun? Right. Imagine for a second if you were in the scorching desert wearing just your bathing suit. Now, the heat from the sun would burn your skin and cause severe skin damage. Right. Now, Arabs wear this traditional robe called a dish dash. Now, this white robe they wear keeps the sun from blaring on them and kind of actually reflects the sun off. And your dog's fur does the same thing. That's why it's that certain color and it has a certain shimmer to it. And it actually protects the dog wow. from the heat. Now, the rule of thumb is this. You should not shave your dog if it has a double coat. Oh. Now, if your dog has a soft, woolly kind of undercoat, underneath, and then this harsher, maybe a little tougher hair, a top coat on top, then you should not shave your dog. Right. Northern breeds, like your Huskies and your Malamutes, should never be shaved like that. Sometimes if a dog, let's say you get one from a uh, a shelter, or Mm -hmm. the dog hasn't been taken care of, you get this really thick matting of the skin, and that can be really bad for the dog. It hurts the dog. It causes the dog to have severe skin infections. Right. Oftentimes, you can't brush those mats out without hurting the dog. And the veterinarians I've studied has said that's one case when you really should trim the dog's hair back. If the matting is so bad that you can't brush the dog out, then you need to do something pretty radical. Um, Wow. But that would only be in horrible circumstances, like if the dog had been mistreated and if the coat was so matted and damaged. It's exactly right, because it can't clean its own fur. It's in a real bad way. So if you do have to shave your husky, what can you do to protect the dog? Well, one thing is, in the summertime, if you have to shave the dog down, then you've got to put some kind of suntan lotion on the dog. (laughs) Yeah, it sounds silly. That's weird. But you need to because imagine somebody who had a full head of hair and then all of a sudden they cut all their hair off and they go out and go to a baseball game. They're going to get burned and peeled and it's very, very hard on the dog. And so what you do is you get some suntan lotion you put that on. Let's say you get a dog from a shelter and its hair is all matted and it's in the wintertime. Then I really strongly suggest you get one of those little sweaters or one of those <laughs> coats for the dog and right. uh, hope the dog will be fine. That's interesting. But, you know, we talked about how people from desert climates will wear these billowy robes. But people still sweat, though. I mean, there still is kind of some natural cooling thing. I guess do dogs just sweat through their fur? Dogs do and they don't sweat. Let me explain this to you because it's really quite interesting. When you sweat, what happens is liquid water seeps through your skin and wets you down. Now that water that hits your skin does not cool you because the water that's coming out of your body is at 98.6 degrees. The magic of sweating and the cooling that comes because of it is the fact that the water on your skin evaporates into a gas. You see, sweat is mostly water. And if you think about it, to get water to become a gas or steam, you gotta put it on the stove and heat it up. Right. Let me put it this way. It's kinda like a man if he were to turn into a werewolf. And whenever I see that on a movie, it's like the man goes through all kinds of pain in order to make that change into a werewolf. Right. Now, that's a lot like what happens to water. In order for water to turn into a gas or steam, it's got to go through a lot of changes. And that takes energy, the same way as a man to turn into a werewolf takes a lot of energy to make that radical phase change happen. Right. In order to get one gram of water, that's about three drops, to turn into one gram of gas, is steam, it mm-hmm. takes 2,000 200 joules. How much is 2,200 joules? 2,200 joules is about as much heat as given off when you light a blue tip kitchen match and it flares in front of you. Wow. That's about 2,200 joules. It takes about that much energy to turn three drops of water into steam. Wow. And that's a lot of heat. Now, if you sweat 10 grams of water on your skin and that evaporates, that's going to pull off 
10 times 220, that's going to pull off about 22,000 joules of heat out of your body. So wow. that's how you cool yourself. Huh. Water evaporates. As the heat is pulled out of your body by the evaporating water, your body cools down. Now, dogs don't have sweat glands, but what they do is they pant right. by opening their mouths and allowing their tongues to kind of hang there wet and then drawing air in and out. The water in their mouth evaporates, and what happens is they're cooled by having the water go in and out of their mouth. So while dogs don't sweat, they use the same kind of steam evaporation technique to cool themselves, but instead of on their arms and legs and back, they do it with their mouth and their tongue. Huh. You know, other animals do kind of the same thing. Elephants don't sweat, so what they do is they pick up water with their trunk and they spray it on their <laughs> <Yeah>. bodies, <laughs> and then the water evaporates. So it's a kind of the same thing, but elephants don't sweat, they just pour water on themselves. It's really interesting. Interesting how different animals have evolved to do different things. It might be good for dogs to keep their fur dry, so sweating through the skin really wouldn't make that much sense. Correct. It's very interesting. And one thing, Jessica, if you're not sure whether your dog should have had your hair cut back or not, just ask your veterinarian and they'll let you know. That's great. Yeah, well, thanks so much, Dad, for looking up all that information and sharing all that with us. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Tune in next week. We will have another delightful scientific phenomena, probably also themed with summer. Thanks so much, Dad. Okay, bye-bye now. Bye.